Ross McIntyre. And Alan talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. Ross McIntyre. And Alan, I seen that. And uh, so this is the second time you've been on. Last time we talked about the Arrowverse, which is CW's yes. DC series they have four i think they have a fifth one coming out but it's not technically going to be a part of the Arrowverse. what's the i don't remember it doesn't really matter i don't know <clears throat> i know that the the cw versus yeah cw versus the second worst version of the dc universe out there <laughs> <laughs> the dceu just has it beat absolutely it's, has it beat it's shocking it's shocking how bad it is I, I was. I saw your. Uh, I listened to the podcast with nitpicks about Justice League, and I was just very much on their side. I was like, yep, this is just not a movie. <laughs> no, it's awful. What, yeah, it was truly horrendous. They said that they felt that George Clooney is a better Batman than uh, Ben Affleck. What's your <laughs> What's your take on that? Because that that offended me very deeply. I've thought about this a lot. <laughs> I, I may have to agree with them. No <laughs> I'm way. Sorry. Okay, it's it's more of a joke that I agree with them yeah. because George Clooney, I can at least call what he did trying. Yeah. If we're comparing just Justice League, like in Batman v Superman, Affleck is trying, but he just it, it, it's all kind of misdirected. Like it doesn't really Ben Affleck doesn't radiate seriousness and power at all it's, it's ben affleck yeah and then when he does just i don't know weird old man in in justice league he's just kind of a sad old broken man and it's kind of depressing because <laughs> he just looks sad the whole time and so, so yeah i'd say george clooney like at least is a little more enjoyable to leave <laughs> uh sorry let me call you back real quick my connection keeps dropping out on you yeah, I uh, I think Ben Affleck in Batman versus Superman did a pretty good job. Uh, Justice League was not good, but comparing yeah. to George Clooney, it just hurts me because I don't know. I enjoy Ben Affleck much more than I enjoyed George Clooney in the role. I guess I I think Ben Affleck was better. Probably his best performance was in Suicide Squad, actually. For the five seconds that he was in it, it's. It, that's the biggest key. Yeah, I guess it, it was brief enough. It was brief enough, but I was like, no, this is this feels like Batman. Him him punching Harley Quinn in the face was a bit odd. I'm like, no, Batman would probably do that. And no, actually, no, him attacking. Okay, let's let's get on to Suicide Squad now because I just remembered. <laughs> okay, I, I actually ignore what I said about Batman being good because everything about Batman is so wrong in that movie. <laughs> I just remembered. Okay, so our introduction to Batman or secondary introduction through suicide squad. The first time we see him really interact with a, a villain, like a Batman villain mm -hmm. is at night with the villain going down an alleyway with his child. He attacks him, <laughs> which yes. seems for Batman a bit off, a bit hypocritical. <laughs> <laughs> he's trying, he's trying I, to I make feel like more Batman would not want to attack parents and children in alleys. He's trying he's, to make he's, more. He was trying to recruit her to be a Robin. <laughs> yeah, because he lost Robin. He well, I mean, yeah. Oh my god. Actually, oh, what, what if that was it? That'd be so dark. <laughs> if he went there with the intention to kill Deathstroke to make her become like a weird revenge Robin, then he'd recruit her. Oh, that, that that's that's a movie. That's my <laughs> that's a movie. <laughs> Is that what the solo Batman movie's gonna be? Yeah, that's <laughs> the Batman <laughs> killing killing parents indiscriminately trying to get more Robins. <laughs> that'd be great. Oh man. <laughs> Oh, man. Um, but yeah, so Suicide Squad, the trailers, great, right? Yeah. Both. Uh, yeah, they can sell a movie. Both trailers. I mean, all the DC trailers have been pretty good. Justice League uh, trailer. Uh, I feel I, like. I'd argue I, I always got a bad feeling from the Justice League trailers, even but, from the first one. But is that because you've been burned so many times? Well, after Batman v Superman, I was, I was ready not to like Suicide squad because i don't like david ayer uh -huh. really at all uh the yeah. other movie i've seen by him was fury and fury is not a good movie uh actually no i saw end of watch end of watch was pretty good but i feel like he's better at doing these smaller sort of intimate stories 
Um, I think I think End of Watch was good, but not perfect. And I saw the flaws in it in Fury as well, which was uh, well, actually, Fury didn't have any likable characters, which was my concern. Yeah. And David Ayer strikes me as the kind of person who thinks that people being badass is what's really important. And with End of Watch, I um, be, well because of my dad, I have a like a connection with police officers, and I I can connect with that more readily. And uh, I, I found them to be likable characters too. Their interactions felt very natural. But in uh, Fury, <clears throat> uh, it just uh, none of the characters were really that likable. They were all kind. Of Kind of pricks and i mean it was world war ii so no one was in a good headspace oh. but um approaching like all these weird comic book villains i did think he would uh i didn't know how he would bring a lot of likability and the likability seemed to be uh okay will smith just to be yourself and that'll be enough i i'm having every time i have not liked will smith for a while now i can't remember the last movie i saw where i was like oh he did mm-hmm. that was a great choice for him I just I don't think he's ever been like a a great actor. I I mean people always talk about pursuit of happiness and my aunt tells me 7 pounds is good. I think that's what it's called. 7 pounds. But I mean is I want awful. Yeah. It's I watched weird. Concussion recently. Yeah. And he's he's, he's not very good in it. And mm. I, as you recently did, I watched Bright, David Ayer's new film, the yes. newest collaboration. What a wonderful piece of magic Bright is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what a life-changing adventure Bright is. Um, I, I, I liked the allegories that were so subtle and so wonderful. <laughs> I, I think I so, missed a lot of them. They, like, it's, it's hard to latch on to. David Ayer really hides these things. Actually, my favorite <laughs> part of Bright is uh, there's a piece of – when they're in the bathroom, there's a piece of graffiti on the wall that's a quote and says, I love orcs, and the person quoted is nobody. And I'm like, who would write that on a wall? <laughs> Who would write? That's like the. It's like uh, to put it in real life racism terms. That'd be like some writing. I like Asians. Quote nobody on a wall. Like that's that would make you yeah. laugh. That's not. That's not like a like a. Ooh, that's terrible. Who would write that? Like, who? It would. The question is, who would write that? As in, who thinks that's racism? That's yeah. Just who kinda, thinks that would just, hurt just anyone's feelings? Yeah, it's it, it's just it's silly and bright as a whole is kind of silly. And Suicide Squad, I think, suffers from the same problems where. Nothing about Suicide Squad functions at all. No. Like, nothing about this movie works. Well, the, From the ground up, it's just broken. Now, I've seen all of them except Wonder Woman. and Okay. Which, unfortunately, seems to be the worst way to go about it, seeing as Wonder Woman is regarded as the best one so far. But I believe that's the only one that has had mm. kind of a single visionary thread throughout like there wasn't a lot of meddling going on with wonder woman from my understanding i could be wrong but all the other movies they've course corrected halfway through i mean man of man of steel yeah man of steel and wonder woman are the only ones that feel like okay we have a script and now we're shooting yeah everything else feels kind of cobbled together like justice league most of all but suicide squad definitely feels chopped up you can see it in those weird little neon edits like the character introductions yes i I don't think those were in the original cut for some reason it's it's weird how that was done by a trailer house from my understanding that that exactly yeah they so they made the original trailer and everyone loved it they're like oh this is great the bohemian rhapsody one i think it was and it, I think they actually made the original on one, which was crazy to me. The which one? Because that one was kind of slow, and at, the one they showed at Comic Con in 2015, the one that had the "I'm not going to hurt you" or "I'm not going to kill you," I'm just going to hurt you really bad at the end. Yeah, that was. I think that was the one they made, which really shocked me because people were like, "Okay, that looks really cool because it looked kind of dark and edgy." Mm. And then the Be- Bohemian Rhapsody one showed off a completely different movie. And then they, I think David Ayer's cut, they made, from what I understand, they made David Ayer's cut, then the trailer house made their cut, and they kind of mushed them together, and David Ayer said, this is my cut, I swear, and nobody bought it, (laughs) because, I mean, it it, it doesn't really, because, I mean, Bright feels like what I would call a David Ayer movie, and some of Suicide Squad feels like a David, everything when they're on the street, and it's just kind of murky and dark and terrible to look at, because all of David Ayer's movies are really ugly, and just kind of unpleasant to watch. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're not. They don't look good. And then you can tell he, he's he's not really comfortable with big visual effects set pieces because all the effects don't look good. And Incubus, one of the main villains, is 
the worst effect put in a modern movie, I would say. <laughs> that is the Enchantress's brother, right? Is that Yeah, the yeah. big the big CGI man. Yeah. I mean Enchantress herself is silly. Yes. That's the thing you want. You want to have a villain. You want to have a villain who who works against villains. Like, what if it? It might have been interesting if if Batman was presented as the villain or something. But it's just it's just all these people have to fight these people. Even the concept of how the Suicide Squad exists in this world doesn't make sense because they try to tie all these movies together and like, okay, Superman's dead. So if another Superman shows up, uh, we'll just get this girl with a bat. And then we'll be set, guys. <laughs> like, <laughs> like in the in the comics, what's interesting about the Suicide Squad is is saying is, is the idea of take these people who are bad and let them do some good, but the good is in quotation marks. Like we use them for our own ends. We use them to do what we can't. And there are superheroes in the world, so fighting supervillains should not be what you recruit the supervillains to do. It, it just doesn't make sense. Like they should have gone on some sort of black ops mission against the Joker. Obviously, like that, that was the most obvious choice. Yeah, that's what and I expected. You could, you could have played with Harley Quinn. Yeah, and you could have had something like you know Harley Quinn is maybe reformed, quote unquote, and then she kind of relapses and turns against the squad. Like I, maybe I've written my own Suicide Squad script, and maybe it's <laughs> terrible. But I'm saying like there's there's a lot of potential in that idea. And it seems like they, they, they made a superhero movie with characters who don't function as superheroes. Well, they they do, though. That was the most frustrating part. They don't do anything that's villainous other than, what, break a window? Like, yeah, th- that's the I mean, only time she, like, she steals something from a window. I don't, I don't even remember what she stole. But she's like, I have to we're the bad guys. Because, okay. Yeah, I have to disagree with you because I remember they turn to the camera and say, we're bad guys. So I know they're bad guys, you see. Yeah. that's a good screen <laughs> they drink that's what we call them. <laughs> they're drinking alcohol this is uh that's what we call in the in the uh, industry uh good writing <laughs> <laughs> is have your have your characters <clears throat> turn to the camera and and say their motivation and say their role in the story well it's it's, it's they do it multiple the times <laughs> in the bar will smith just turns to the camera don't forget we're the bad guys. It's like, I, I know what you're trying to do here. <laughs> I, I know the concept of the film. I paid for my ticket. Please entertain me. Well, they should have, I mean, really, they should have been doing things that superheroes couldn't do. That's the whole point of the Suicide Squad, yeah. right? Like, well, I mean, there was Slipknot. He could, he could really climb, couldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he could climb anything. Well, let's go, let's go through character by character, because that's probably the okay. best way to talk about this movie. It's the best thing about the movie. It's so, the best thing about this amazing movie. We got Will Smith is kind of... It, Will Smith and Margot Robbie are competing for this movie. Like, it, it's hard to say whose movie it really is. Uh, I think Will Smith has more star power, but I think Margot Robbie did a better job. I will argue with you there. I think Margot Robbie's performance is horrendous in this movie. Really? Hmm. It's horrible it's i mean i get the purpose of harley quinn is to annoy you yeah but i've always found the character to be like kind of endearing i never really liked the character that much but when i do like her it's because she's kind of endearing and i just found her to be obnoxious and annoying and margo you can do better was what i was thinking a lot just margo you can do so much better than this you don't need this (laughs) i know you're making good money but you could be doing so much better (laughs) Really? See, I didn't find her that annoying. I thought she did a pretty good job. Uh, Will okay. Smith, I had a really hard time with because he's just he's too Will Smith. I mean, like we said, he doesn't yeah. he doesn't really act, and he's very charismatic. And so, as a person who is a villain, he never came across as sinister at all. Oh, not sinister in any way. And I like Deadshot has always been. A character I've hand, I've seen handled in a variety of ways across all sorts of different things, but usually you do like the idea. I think they did away with the whole like him tattooing the names of people he killed on his body. But if they showed that, like that might have been a moment where you get like, oh man, this guy has killed a lot of people, like and he's done some really bad things. But you only ever see him kill one guy who is like a mob informant, like a rat. So you don't even. Like they they they're afraid to go dark with it. I think they're yeah. afraid to really. And I'm not saying like you got to go dark and be gritty, man. Everything's got to be the dark night. Because that's a real. I think that's a real attitude problem with uh, how a lot of people view the DC movies. And like they have to be dark. But it's like with these characters, like you've got villains, you've got source material that points to some very dark stuff, and you can even imply it because you got to keep a PG thirteen. 
but you can even imply some dark stuff. You don't have to show Deadshot murdering 50 people, but you can show the evidence of that and have that be known. You want him because to like blow up an orphanage yeah. or something. I mean, that'd be hilarious, but, <laughs> but, but having him just shoot one guy and then shoot a, a horde of a, a, like faceless monsters, that doesn't really give me a sense of his skill, especially since they deploy the Suicide Squad with soldiers. So you don't even get the sense that like the Suicide Squad is special because they're just randos that they just throw with soldiers. So they're, if you want them to do something specific, why are you get, putting them alongside the military because the military can shoot people together as well as Deadshot can shoot. Yeah. Like I think like Rick Flagg's ability is that he can shoot really well from what I understand. That's what, kind of what his thing is. And that's they kind of do a buddy cop thing with that. But there's it, the, the movie is all half measures. Like they start doing stuff here and there and they just pretend like it's enough to carry you through. And that's why it baffles me when people are like, yeah, Suicide Squad's a great movie because it, it doesn't really do anything complete it, completely. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. very generic. Like it's, yeah, it's like the off brand version of superhero movies. It's like even the, the, even the, the Walmart twist. brand. Yeah. Yeah. Even the plot twist in the middle of the movie lands with no impact at all. There's like a little, even I remember in the theater seeing it, there's like a music sting that accompanies it when they reveal it's Amanda Waller and it's the lamest, most ineffectual musical sting. It's like, dan it, it, it's barely there. It, like the movie doesn't even care about the twist. <laughs> like, it doesn't <laughs> even want you to tell you how to feel about it. You're not that you don't know. And then Amanda Waller is kind of like, yes, you were all here to get me out. And I was wondering what, well, why were you there? What? And how did you get this base set up? And who are these people you're killing? They had no clearance. Well, why, why were they here then? It, <laughs> It doesn't make any sense, man. It doesn't make any sense. Amanda Waller, as a character, is supposed to be the worst character, right? Like, she's supp- you're supposed right. to hate her consistently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's having a character like that in a movie or in a show is exhausting. Because there's mm-hmm. no, like, everything they do is just frustrating. And you're like, why? Like, this is just annoying like no one would put up with this yeah i think the way the characters are built like the way all of these characters are built in all the dc movies is a big problem with how the universe has been built up because they didn't do what marvel did which was say our universe is starting with iron man and then have captain america to show that stuff that happened like timeline wise Mm. the universe kind of starts with the first iron man movie with this you have a batman who had been working for 20 years so all these characters are established and because they are big in pop culture like people know who the joker is if they don't read comics people know who I guess I'm from, I mean, from uh, the Dark Knight trilogy, who Bane is, who characters like that are. They can guess that. But you have to, if you want to recontextualize them into this more comic book like universe, you have to build them up from the ground again. Instead, they just kind of throw the Joker at you, but it's Jared Leto and he looks, he's not like any other Joker we've seen and he's acting really weird. I could go on for hours about Jared Leto alone, but it, it doesn't feel it's not the same character. I feel like these DC movies, they didn't want to put the time into building characters. Yeah. So they just assumed people would understand. Like one, like Wonder Woman is the ultimate example of that. She just shows up in the Wonder Woman outfit. If you don't recognize that, you're not going to know what's going on in yeah. Batman and Superman. I mean, and well, that's why her origin movie builds her character so well because she has a complete story and you get a really good sense of who she is. Like I actually really like Wonder Woman's character based on her movie alone, but in BVS and Justice League, she's a flatline. She's nothing. Yeah, she in those two movies, she was awful. I mean, not awful, but mm. just pointless. She did not seem... Yeah. She didn't do anything. She didn't seem worth being there. I mean, that's how yeah. most of the characters feel in uh, Justice League. Mm-hmm. The... Oh, that's a terrible movie. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not good. It's not good. I would say it's worse than Suicide Squad, to be honest. Yeah, I think so. I know Suicide Squad is kind of lauded as like the worst DC movie and like the worst blockbuster ever. And some people say BVS is worse. Yeah. I say Justice League is the worst one because you can the the cracks are so apparent in Justice League that you can see you can li- actually tell where they went and swapped stuff out and how terribly done it is and how rushed it all was. With Suicide Squad, I at least have got the sense that they had a completed movie at some point mm-hmm. and then chopped it up. Yeah. Justice League, I don't feel like was ever complete. This movie, there was something, I don't think it was ever going to be a good movie or like maybe an okay one at best. Yeah. 
but it, it turned into such a disaster because they didn't know what they wanted to do with it. And they're like, well, let's put in some, uh, put in some pop songs. People like that Bohemian Rhapsody. Uh, the kid, the kids today love queen and the white stripes. So let's put some of that in there. Guardians of the galaxy was big. So let's put songs actually from that soundtrack in this movie. <laughs> it, it just, it's, it's, it, it, there was no focus to what the movie was going to be. Yeah. The acts in Suicide Squad are not very cohesive, but each act oh, no. seems to be contained. Do you know what I mean? Like where mm-hmm. back, uh, Justice League is <clears throat> so chopped up from scene to scene, at yeah. least Suicide Squad Act 1 is kind of it, it, one thing and Act 2 is kind of one thing and Act 3 is kind of, you know, like the inside yeah. of the things, they're yeah. more one story, but they're not cohesive at all. They just feel like they go on for so long, too. Yes. Because Suicide Squad, I think, is the funniest comedy released in the last decade easily. But it is so boring at the same time. Because you just – there's no cleverness to introducing the characters. Like I think it would have been cool to maybe have a montage of Batman or superheroes catching all these characters to get a sense of who they are and what they can do. Yeah have some creativity with that but instead they just you have a character sitting at a table just reading off like the back of their trading card this is harley quinn she can do this she's with the joker this is deadshot he can shoot really good this is uh, el diablo he killed his family he, he makes fire like it, it's it's so lazy and i know david ayer only w- was only given six weeks to do this script but i would think that he would come up with something better something better than just having a character sit down and just talk to the audience yeah yeah, I mean, even if you just cut out Amanda Waller from all of that, I think it's stronger. Yeah. Like, you just mm-hmm. have the montage part and yeah. just show it. And then it, I think it, the, the issue is them walking, you know, like holding your hand through all of it is a big part yeah. of it. Yeah. And there's, that's, it, I don't know. It's hard because not everyone it's- knows anything about this stuff. So they're like catering to people who are, completely unaware but Mm. if you're going to make a comic book movie you need to make it for the people who like comic book movies you would think that's what marvel does that's why marvel exactly at least that's what marvel used to do i think they're it i don't know marvel's not quite as good as it used to be in my opinion but yeah um and marvel is well i think marvel still knows how to build up a character from the ground and kind of give you a sense of who they are, what they can do and, and why you as an audience member should care about them. Usually yeah. it's very simplistic, but I think they're good at, at, at giving comics blind audiences something they can understand based on the comics. And maybe I think peaking an interest in comics. I think if you watch something like Dr. Strange and you really like the character and you really like what that world is like, you could go read the comics and you could expand based on that. Yeah. With this, you kind of have to have a preconceived idea actually kind of, a more in-depth knowledge than I would think necessary to understand these movies. Like with Batman v Superman, if you see the flash scene where he comes through the portal, you're not going to understand what that is unless you know what like flashpoint or infinite crisis is. You're not going to understand the dark side symbol. You're not going to understand the parademons. You might not even understand who wonder woman is because she's not given an introduction with anything but miss Prince. Yeah. Like you're, you're just expected to know these things. And I know these things, but I was talking to my friend, a uh, few uh, about a couple months after we went and saw Batman v Superman, he said, "I went, to, I went to see this with my mom. I took her to see Batman v Superman, and she didn't know what was happening half the time. She didn't know who everyone was, or what they could do, or why. And yeah, if you don't know like the history of Batman, if, even if him stopping and looking at the suit, like you see the ha ha ha, and you get okay, that's the Joker because you know Batman and the Joker. Mm-hmm. But you might not know that's Robin's suit yeah. if you don't, if you're not really familiar. It, it's just too many blanks. I think you're expected to fill in with lore instead of the movie itself. Yeah. Oh, this this universe, I, I, it, <clears throat> this universe is a mess. If if they would oh, just yeah. make standalone movies and not worry about connecting them, it could be so much mm-hmm. better. And I know they didn't want to do what Marvel did, but maybe they should have because it works. <laughs> like start off with individual start movies. Simple. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because they tried that is the other thing. Mm-hmm. They made the Green yeah. Lantern and that failed. Like they. And then they made Man of Steel and it was really polarizing. Yeah. But it's just a matter of you need a really strong start. And Man of Steel was their attempt at a start and it didn't really work out. And I think maybe they should have stuck with it, but maybe gone in a different direction and not 
doubled down and said, yes, we'll get Zack Snyder back and we'll get him to make a three hour movie where he fights uh, Batman. I think that was just the big mistake was, was trusting the same filmmakers with a thing that didn't get the result they wanted. Sure. It made them $600 million, but they wanted a billion with Superman. They wanted another dark Knight rises or yeah. dark Knight, And they tried to recreate that magic, but it doesn't work with Superman. And also Zack Snyder isn't a very good filmmaker. So <laughs> 300 was good. Eh. <laughs> For what it is. I mean, it's I not, guess. it's not like a, masterpiece that people will ever study but it's a fun movie to watch at least at I the guess. time I've, I've never loved it that much um <clears throat> but jared leto in uh, suicide squad <sighs> okay <laughs> i think he really got shafted here uh he was crazy he did stupid stuff and they made up like built up all this lore about like him sending dead rats to his co uh, co-hosts or mm -hmm. co-stars and all this stuff uh and they edited him out almost completely and so they they built him up didn't use him at all and w his choices were so strange but i think there might be a good performance in there i think the stuff you see in the um the the trailers and all that like the trailers the joker looks great i think you know i his design is a little goofy and all the tattoos are kind of dumb but he seemed like when he's telling Harley Quinn that he's going to, he's not going to kill her. He's just going to hurt her really bad. That's a great like, moment. Mm -hmm. And they ruined it in the actual movie yes. with the, with the weird editing and that pink like zooms and mm -hmm. those weird filters. I, I, I could write a dissertation about Jared Leto's performance in this movie. <laughs> I'm so, I'm obsessed with it. I can't, I've watched this movie several times just to watch the Jared Leto scenes. Yeah. Cause I like, I, I, I mean, you could just watch a compilation on YouTube, but I just like, I like waiting for him to pop up and knowing when they're coming and just waiting for a little dose of Jared. Cause he's just this weird flavor of terrible. That's mm -hmm. especially like, it's like the room level of terrible. It's like, it's, it, it's the sort of thing where it's like, Oh, you've never done this before. <laughs> I, I, I knew, I knew he was an actor, but it seriously made me question. Oh, have you been in a movie? Have you seen a movie before? Do you, do you know what you're doing? Do you know at all what you're doing? And I think he was a very safe choice when they tapped him to play because everyone's kind of like Jared Leto could play that probably. And he just won his Oscar for Dallas Buyers Club, Yeah, which I honestly, I saw that movie recently. I don't know if he deserved that either. I don't think Jared Leto is a very good actor generally. Mm. Um, and in this, it's just, holy crap. You really just, you have no idea what you're doing. And, and the whole dead rat thing kind of points to like, well, I'll just do this and it'll make me seem like more mysterious, like Heath Ledger. But Heath Ledger was actually a good actor uh, on top of doing all that stuff and yeah. being immersive. And Jared Leto, from the, I'd, I'd say from the ground up, is just not a very good actor. And I, I, I it's hard to feel sympathy for him because I think he's just kind of a, honestly, a bad person in real life. Uh, <laughs> I just I, I don't really have any sympathy for Jared Leto being edited out and him being kind of whiny about it because yeah. like, you know them's the breaks you're in a big comic book movie you're in a franchise like they are not beholden to keep your brilliant performance as the Joker intact sir I'm sorry I'm, I'm so sorry your heart was broken because you wanted to talk about I don't know beating up prostitutes some more whatever you're going to talk about in those bonus scenes Jared I'm sure you did some improv I'm sure I want to see all of Jared Leto's improv I want to see <laughs> all of the Joker improv because that would be amazing because you know he started singing at some point right he had to have and like i want to see jared leto in full joker makeup singing oh god that'd be great <laughs> but it, it's just it's it's this great little boost of energy when whenever he shows up where you're like oh this just insanity is happening now like we've just gone off the rails and, and jared's just going off <laughs> well what don't you like about his performance i just it it's it's unstable and unfocused, but mm -hmm. not in a good way. Yeah. Cause again, it, it does, it is related to your point about how they edited him down. Mm -hmm. I'm sure if there was more of him, there may have been more of a through line, Yeah. but you never get a sense of what his Joker is all about. Aside from I'm crazy. I'm the Joker. Yeah. It, it, it just feels like he's trying really hard. I guess, you know, it's, and he's obviously acting. I know he's acting, but it, it, I cannot separate him 
from being Jared Leto, the actor trying to be the Joker. I don't like I see as when I watch uh, Dark Knight, the more times I've seen it, I see Heath Ledger behind the makeup more and more. But he still really embodies that character. And I would say that uh, Christian Bale does the same with his kind of stoicism as Batman. And actors do it all the time in various roles, no matter how recognizable they are. They can get lost in roles. And it's really spectacular when you know what you're doing. Jared Leto doesn't know what he's doing. He's not a good actor. And it just looks like he's trying really hard to be something he doesn't fully believe in. Yeah. Yeah. I think if they would have given him more screen time, not – I don't care for – Jared Leto's sake. Just oh, I wish they had. I wish they had. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see it all. When they said they had like a hundred mi- uh, uh, minutes of footage and they were they could have released a whole movie, I was like, "Do it! Release it on my birthday! <laughs> <laughs> I want that! I want that now!" <laughs> I just think if they would have given him more, because every time he's in there, he's acting so like in the scene in the club where he is like flipping yeah, his that's personality. The scene in the movie. If they gave him the weirdest scene in the movie. more foundation of a normal, normalcy, like this is kind of how his personality is. And then he switches, it would be more mm-hmm. effective where yeah. he's just constantly bipolar, like happy, mad, yeah. crazy, you know, going to kill you. Like I think of, uh, it's not even, yeah, it's not even, organized bipolar though he's just jumping all over the place to yeah. all sorts of the spectrum and there's no through line yeah so sorry i interrupted oh, no, you're fine. <laughs> i just think of uh wilson fisk in daredevil uh season one the, oh that's a really Netflix. good point yeah you know he has s- huge swings right but they mm-hmm. give him this long drawn out one note you know kind of uh of personality where it's like nothing 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 and then it spikes and it's so much yeah, it more builds effective. To it. Yeah, and it uh, builds. And Jared Leto is just always on. He's always crazy, and then he'll be kind of off for a second, and you get the feeling they cut like maybe a minute of build up to his crazy. Yes. And instead, it's five seconds of build up, and then it's just okay. You're just all Jared. I don't know what you're trying to do right now. Yeah. Which, yeah. which is what makes the the whole movie is kind of like that. Mm-hmm. There's no sort of flow or or cons consistent pacing it goes at it slows right down as soon as they get in the city it slows right down and it's just really kind of boring until they get to the helicopter and deadshot finds the top secret folder (laughs) and then he throws it because he gets that's again the the big like they just they followed like a screenwriting guidebook but it doesn't work with these characters i think uh the nostalgia critics review had a really good point because when they all they all give up and get a drink it's like superhero super villains by definition are the most motivated people alive and and the only reason why they stop fighting is because they find out who they were fighting but they have no connection to that person so why do they care <laughs> <laughs> yeah it uh, it's the nothing feels earned in this and i, I no, think that's yeah. part of the issues with maybe dc as a whole but with comic book movies yeah. is you have you have all this, you know, history of the comics, you know, 50, 60, mm-hmm. 70 years of lore yeah. and different things that people know and are like really invested in. So where they're like, oh, we don't need to, we don't need to establish this. We'll just throw that in there and people will enjoy it. And that's, people will get it. That's yeah. fine in Iron Man 1 because it, there's like a few things here and there, but it just seems like it's consistently growing because they're like, oh, that worked. Mm-hmm. Let's add more. If you want to, yeah. More. If you want to have Easter egg, if you want to have Easter eggs in your movie, don't have them directly influence your plot. Yes. Like leave them on the outskirts for people who really love this stuff to discover. Because I feel like Doomsday was like a big Easter egg like in Batman and Superman, mm-hmm. except he's the whole climax of the movie. And maybe Wonder Woman was too. But her coming in and turning the tide of battle is a big point in the movie. Yeah. Like maybe just have her be around or whatever. Like it, 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 There's no reason to have these little references and that point where, um, I mean, she just stops and looks on the computer and sees all the files of the Justice League people. It, it's just, it, 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 it shouldn't affect the plot that well. It should be more cleverly woven in but again you're dealing with people who have seen what marvel's doing and don't really understand it they just say if we throw more things in there that people like people will like the movie yeah that's not how it works though <laughs> um, unfortunately well the next probably main character is the giant mm. blue beam into the sky 
What did you oh, think of that? My favorite character. <laughs> I love seeing that in every movie. It's really good because I I think there was even there wasn't one in Wonder Woman, but there was like a big blue explosion at one point. I'm like, oh, you still got it in there. It still counted. I still count it. It's a big blue explosion, looks like a bean. Is it um, is it I'm becoming the uh the Wilhelm scream? Is that what that is becoming for superhero movies now? I guess it's 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 a little more overt than just yeah. like a moment because it always it's always like the point of the movie eventually. Yeah. Um, it's shocking. It's yeah. shocking that they continually do that. Mine is that it's always blue. Yeah. That's my sticking point. I, I, make it red. That's something. <laughs> That's something. It's always blue. <laughs> yeah. It's like how how has that become a trope? Like how many movies have used that? It's got to be at least ten by now, right? So many, so many, and, it, and I'm I'm looking forward to the the ten more because it's going to happen in Infinity War at least once, I'm sure. Yeah, there, there's got to be another way to destroy the Earth. I mean, at least Avengers two, Must. they pick the Earth up and we're going to drop it on itself. That was something. A the whole different. city became the blue beam. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it, we are the beam now. <laughs> <laughs> they, oh man, they, and the the faceless enemies is another big problem i get absolutely i get that it needs to be pg-13 and you want to kill things but you gotta pick one or the other like if you're gonna kill people just kill people make it Mm -hmm. r-rated if you're gonna make it pg-13 just make them fight like don't destroy don't kill like i don't i don't know what to it's make it non-lethal attacks yeah they're they're always but when you have villains like this, like Deadshot, whose whose goal is to shoot people, is yes. to shoot as many people as he can, it's hard to. I mean, but maybe it would have been cool to like have him say like no, like no lethals, or have him, just give him rubber bullets and have him work around with that, something like that. Yeah. Because if they had deployed them on their own Black Ops mission, they would have done something like that. But no, they're sent into a big full scale military attack, like a military incursion for some reason. Because like, why would you send Harley Quinn? on a full scale military mission. She is not to be trusted. <laughs> she can't be trusted. <laughs> also, Even the how useful like, yeah, is you know. she? Like, uh, but apparently very, the movie made her very useful, uh, which was unrealistic. I don't think that baseball bat should have been nearly as effective as it was. No, it like, like one hit can take off their heads. I'm like, these are weak monsters. The enchantress has made weak monsters. <laughs> <laughs> That's the real problem. Yeah. Yeah, she was just as effective as all the other villains. And it doesn't really make sense Which, yeah. compared to her abilities. Like, Yeah, it doesn't. Um, by having her fight regular people, would have been, I think, a little more realistic. If they'd been like Joker's henchmen, if it was Joker as the villain. Like if it, it, they're security guards or, or any, yeah, anything, yeah, just yeah. people. Arkham's, Arkham Asylum guards, if something you, like that. You hit a person in the head with a bat. It's effective. They'll go down. Yeah. They'll go down <laughs> as, as easy as a bullet would take them down. But if they're like weird magic monsters who are all eyes or whatever, yeah. it, you expect different rules. You expect more resilient. That that Harley Quinn can just take them down one-on-one in basically unarmed combat just with a big stick. Yeah. Like that's, that's, that doesn't speak well to our villain either. <laughs> no. Well, next, uh, Diablo. Diablo? Yeah, Diablo. What did you think about his character? Yeah, El Diablo. El Diablo. He's just really boring. Yeah. He's just really boring. <laughs> he, I, I don't, I mean, I guess it was interesting to have a pacifist on the team, but his turnaround is so lazy. Yeah. He just dead shot taps him on the head and he just gives up decades of pacifism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, w- just tap, tap, tap. I'm making you angry. Okay. Well now I'll kill everyone. <laughs> his, he was, that's how it works. I'm sure <laughs> he, he was only there to, be used at the end. Like, yeah, and I guess it's sort of a moral compass, but he's not because he doesn't really have a character. Yeah. So his character is I I'm I made a mistake. And then Harley Quinn's like, you're an idiot. Stop being mad at yourself for killing your whole family. <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> I'm just I, I it's so weird. Like I don't know like that, that's supposed to be like the big heart moment. She's like, you know, you got to own it. And it's like, Harley, you didn't murder your family. Like you don't know how it feels. <laughs> he, he's probably very big like, guilt-ridden because he accidentally murdered his wife and child. Like yeah. I would be guilt-ridden too. But uh no, he's just she's just like, yeah, get over it, you big wuss. <laughs> well, what is I don't know. Is he he's in the comics, right? 
Mm-hmm. What is his I character? Think. Yeah, I've never seen him in any comics. I, I'm not the I, biggest I, comic book reader, I, so I didn't know. Yeah, I'm, I've I've honestly never encountered him before yeah. in comics. I don't I don't know what he's all about. Maybe it's the same thing, but I'm I'm sure they gave him more character or something, or or just didn't make him a pacifist. They're yeah. probably just like uh, this, the script says. The script writing guide says uh, uh, one character doesn't want to be violent, and then he discovers his need to be violent at the end to save the day, and then he becomes a big fire monster, <laughs> a big weird, weirdly Native American designed fire monster. That was strange. Yeah. Really? Yeah. But, but I mean, I just remember, I, I when I saw this movie for the first time. It's a magical story. This is a magical story. Yeah. When I saw this movie for the first time, I saw it in IMAX 3D because of course I did mm-hmm. with my friend Jamal, and we'd we'd heard about how terrible it was, and we're both huge Batman and DC fans. We're like, let's go in. It's go like if, even if it's bad, it's going to be fun. And we were just laughing, and we I think we turned the theater around. Because nobody was really into it, but we were dead center in the theater, just laughing our heads off the whole time. And when stupid stuff started happening, everyone in the theater started laughing. Like we made the theater realize how how funny this movie was. And when El Diablo turns into a big monster and comes out and says it's on, bitch, with the <laughs> subtitles, we just the whole theater lost it. It was amazing. It was like this is the silliest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Didn't that feel kind of like the Hulk in Avengers One? Yeah, it did. Or uh, sort of Ripley and Aliens. <laughs> yeah, it was just... Yeah. <laughs> it's just like... But it, I mean, with the Hulk, you know what the Hulk can do, and that moment feels very earned. With this, it's like, oh, he could, he could do that? Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, oh that, that was never established. I thought he could just make fire. But no, he's a big old demon, and then he he, he dies uh, because, the as we all know, the greatest weapon against ancient magical beings is... Uh, traditional explosives <laughs> and, and just a big old stick of dynamite. It makes me really angry. They, they, they beat magic with C4 in this movie, which I, I don't know if that's some sort of weird message, some weird moralistic thing David Ayer wants us to take away. <laughs> but um, yeah, the traditional explosives are the, are the greatest enemy of magic in this movie. Um, the Enchantress. What did you think of her as a villain? Oh boy. Cara Delevingne cannot act. Um, and her weird dubbed voice when she's full on enchantress made me laugh so much. <laughs> and I love her little dance she does. It's very, it's very adorable. Her little dance, her little belly dance. It's just she's she's got a big machine. Her motivation, I believe, is uh, humans don't worship us anymore. They worship machines. So yes. I'm gonna make a machine and kill them all, which is a very solid motivation. Makes total sense if you ask me. It's basically um, a black yeah, no mirror. Holes in that at all. <laughs> It's a Black oh, Mirror it's episode. It's just like it's oh, it's just like Black Mirror. What if what if the whole time they were a TV? <laughs> I think the whole time they were inside a phone. <laughs> yeah, it was a simulation the entire time. Uh, I love Black Mirror, but I love making fun of Black Mirror even more. <laughs> this last what if your season, mom ran off batteries. <laughs> was not very good. You think so? I thought it was pretty mixed. The I, mean, the, I think the, the <clears throat> seasons are aren't very good. I liked. I liked a couple episodes just fine, but uh, I think season four is the worst season out of all really? four. Yeah, um, I think two. I say season two is the worst, honestly. Mm. But yeah. uh, I think USS Callister is probably one of my favorite episodes. Oh, yeah, I love that one. That was good. That was amazing. Um, but would have improved it though. Jared Leto in the lead. There you go. <laughs> Put Jared Leto in the captain's chair. I thought Aaron Paul at the end was a pointless, like that was a weird Easter egg. Yeah, yeah, it was just like I didn't even I didn't recognize the guy's voice. I didn't I didn't think anything of it. It seemed weird how much time they gave it. Like that was what I thought. I was like this. This seems kind of pointless. To this is someone. And uh, then I found out it was Aaron Paul. I was like, oh, oh, okay. Uh. It's kind of like the Star Wars (laughs) Easter eggs are like. Oh, this guy is uh, one of the stormtroopers. Okay, who cares? Yeah, sure. Oh, Daniel, Daniel Craig's a stormtrooper. Yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> he has a helmet on. That doesn't really give me anything. Yeah, it's just. Uh, oh, it's his voice. Great, Daniel Craig's distinct voice. Love him. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see who else is there. Jive Courtney was Boomerang, Captain Boomerang. Yeah, I think he's the only thing that comes close to being like a good character. Oh, yeah, and because Jay Courtney is do- not a very good actor. They don't, he he works in this. They don't do anything with him, really. 
Yeah, yeah, that he uh, he has his moment where he leaves, which would have been really funny, except he comes back immediately after and ruins that moment. Yeah. Because when he leaves, that's a really funny joke. And if you just don't see him again, I would have thought, you know what? That's a really solid, funny joke that they just have this guy run. <laughs> and then the very next shot outside, he just shows up again. It's like, oh, I guess you ch- changed your m- mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think sure. the, the reason why his character works better is because he has that pink unicorn and they don't really, I, I could be wrong, but I don't think they tell you why he has it, right? You you become kind of invested into it. Like, uh, why is he protecting that? Why is it so important to him? And so it gives in him- his neon intro. Oh, does in it tell neon intro, they say it's his fetish. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Well, never it's mind. His fetish, that. colon, pink unicorn. Yeah, because, you know, they saw Deadpool and they were like, we can do that too. Gotcha. All right. Well, then it's, that, it's lazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just lazy. <laughs> well, never I mind. I recommend then. watching uh, Folded Ideas. It's mm-hmm. a really good YouTube channel. He talks yeah. About editing. He made the art of editing. Yeah. The art yeah. of editing. Yeah. That him talking about that is really a brilliant point that I never noticed. They, they they established the unicorn as being in his pocket and him keep picking it up. And when he gets stabbed and he pulls the knife out, it's a wad of money instead of the unicorn. And it's like, oh, you just he probably just brought this on set one day. And they thought it was kind of funny and they went with it, but they don't realize that it doesn't make sense and it ruins like the flow of an evolution of a joke. Mm. And it, it, yeah, this, this movie is so disjointed that they probably just thought like, oh, that's kind of funny. Let's do that today. And didn't think about it past that. Yeah. Yeah. They just wrote scene by scene day by day. Yeah. It is, it is awful. Uh, let's see who, uh, croc. Is awful, yeah. the croc, croc, crocodile croc. Oh. Yeah. Killer croc. Killer croc. Thank you uh weirdly racist yeah <laughs> yep i i don't know why they made him like a, a weird black stereotype that was kind of also odd. strange when you think about it compared to bright as well the yeah you know the kind of like the proto orc yeah <laughs> like yeah he's like <laughs> david was like i really got something here <laughs> like, i can make this i can make this work <laughs> <laughs> let's just make a His whole movie, movie on this what if what if they were all this? What if, what if it was like about <laughs> racism and Max Landis was like, I can write a bad script of that. Oh man, I can't. I, Max Landis can write a bad script of anything. I think. Yeah, he. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not a fan of Max Landis. I don't know. I haven't watched the the what is it? Dirk Gently's something something something. Dirk Gently's. Yeah, he wrote Dirk that. Dirk Gently's. Right? I I enjoyed the first season quite a bit. Yeah. It's very cheap and goofy, but kind of kitschy. I'm watching season two right now. It's pretty bad. <laughs> Is it? So they, they, they like lost it after yeah. season one and they canceled it recently. <laughs> so I'm like, good. It's, it, it's like, uh, I think I tweeted earlier. I was like, it's like, it's, it's to, uh, it's, Season two is to season one what Kingsman two is to Kingsman one. Mm. It's like, oh, oh, you just did everything worse, and now I don't want any more of this, so please yeah. just stop. Yeah. yeah. Kingsman two, yeah. that was – that I, I really enjoyed the first Kingsman. Kingsman two mm-hmm. was so disappointing. Yeah, yeah. I I had a similar experience with Suicide Squad, actually. Where I, eventually, I was just laughing at it. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> But Suicide Squad, I think, has been a very important movie in my life. I'm going to get a little emotional here. All right. uh, <laughs> Suicide Squad has been a very important it's, – it's changed the way that I view movies every year because now every year I pick a new Suicide Squad. I give it my Suicide Squad of the Year award okay. because for the most ridiculously, the most ridiculously, terribly incompetent piece of garbage movie from the year mm-hmm. it's not i think not objectively the worst because there were worse movies in 2016 than the suicide squad yeah. i would say but, but just the funniest and the one that sticks out to me and in 2017 i would say it's the death note movie yeah i heard that was bad the netflix one it right? was incredibly bad yeah it was bad in, yeah it was bad in all the right ways in all the ways i love just hilarious awful cringy just the worst and i'm like this is the suicide squad of this year so in 2018 i'm really looking forward to seeing what the suicide squad is because every year there's at least one suicide squad what do you what do you got your hopes on oh i don't know uh because I, I actually don't know too many of like the bigger blockbusters that are coming out yeah uh, I watched more Netflix originals in 2017 than I did before. So I'd, I'd hope there'd be a surprise there. Like some random movie would show up. Like there was that uh, movie, a Christmas Prince that came out at cri- around Christmas time last year. <laughs> that was the it one was so Netflix yeah. tweeted about, right? 
Did yeah, you see that? And I was one of those people who watched it like 50 times because it was incredible. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. It's just like, it's, it's just so bizarre and so awkward and so weird and so incompetent that you're like, this is amazing. This is great. This is good stuff. I need more of this. And it makes me curious because like, I'm curious about whatever David Ayer does now based mm. on Suicide Squad. And Bright was just like a, a great chaser to that shot of crap. Because it was just like, it's just like, this is, Bright was a whole other kind of terrible, but a, still a really fun kind of terrible. One of the things and I, I can't wait to see what he does. Taylor and I were talking about uh, with Bright, and it, we couldn't figure it out, right? So the, the orcs were kind of a black people analog, right? Like that was the idea. Like I feel. I feel weird saying that, but that I feel like that's it's what weird the, because it's not really. It, it's very uh, kind of dumb and handled, and the way they're treated, you're like, I don't really want to equate that. Yeah, but it, it's what it is. It's I like I think it's what Max Landis intended it to be. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> but yet then there are just black people also, right? Yeah, and, yeah I, it makes me wonder. Like, how did slavery work? Were the orcs slaves, and how can there like, should there be other races? And what's the one human race going to be? Like, maybe it would have been interesting to have them all humans be black, and then have the orcs. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I don't, that would have been, I think, a little more obvious. But having multiple races, and then that one line where they say that the Alamo happened. I'm like, how did the Alamo happen? <laughs> there are dragons in this world. Like, the the, the history should not have gotten <laughs> to this point. It's there are so many questions. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. It's, and and Suicide Squad is much the same way, where it just it doesn't make any sense. And the the choices made just raise so many questions that you wonder how did anyone think this was a good idea from the beginning? <laughs> well, is there any other characters that we've forgotten? Um there's the guy that gets his head uh, blown off. I Slipknot, Slipknot, my my favorite character in the whole DC universe. I, <laughs> Slipknot is my favorite. I think Slipknot is my favorite meme to come out of this, just in terms of he has, I think, three lines of dialogue, and then his head gets blown up. He exists just to die. Yeah. And I think I read somewhere in like the original scripts, they were going to make him like a serial rapist or something to make you hate him more and kill him. I'm like, that's even more gross. Yeah. Like, you really have to do that to make us dislike a character? Like, but I mean, again, these these funny little moments, like when when he gets out of the car and just punches that woman in the face. I don't know why I find that so funny. I think it's just the way it's awkwardly handled. She just gets out. And she's like, "Have fun, dirtbag." He just decks her, and then it's like it's like a zoom in on him. And he's like, "She had a mouth," and that line is just hilarious to me. <laughs> Because I, I don't like to think that it was her attitude that bothered him. I, I like to argue it was the fact that she had an actual mouth just that, that angered him. Anatomy. She has a mouth. <laughs> just him. I think he was just stating that fact, and he was just severely, just mentally unstable. <laughs> That's my theory. That's my personal theory about Suicide Squad. Let's see. Uh... I think that's about it. There's Rick Flag, which was kind of a pointless character. He's yeah, exposition. He's boring. He, he has a love interest, and that means you're supposed to care about him. Yeah. Katana, <laughs> which was so underused. Uh, um, I, I like the part where they just say, like, oh, yeah, by the way, her, her sword steals the souls of his victims. And then, again, t- to the point of literally turning to the camera and telling you things. And then later on it's like, Oh yeah, her husband's soul's in there too. And she talks to it. And it's just like, you're just, Oh, okay. I guess we're doing that now. <laughs> this is what we're supposed to accept this hour. It's suicide squad. You just got to roll with it. Eventually when I watched this movie for the sixth time, I was like, you know what? You, you got to laugh. You got to roll with it. I've seen this movie so many times. <laughs> it's just, it never loses its, its shine. <laughs> I see. I've seen death note four times too. I, I can't stop watching these hilarious. Movies. I show them to people. I say to my friends, come over to my place. We are going to watch this movie and maybe you'll understand me more. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll get me more. If you watch this, I can only watch these movies once. I even, I watched some some stuff on it this morning just to kind of refresh my mind, and I was like, "Man, this movie, I I don't want to invest <laughs> any more into this movie." I shouldn't. I I don't have spare time. I should be job hunting. I should be doing my homework. I should be like keeping up with my assignments <laughs> and doing my readings. But no, I'm watching Suicide Squad for the twelfth time on like a Monday night because I'm bored. <laughs> I'm like, this is a great movie. <laughs> it's amazing. It's a and that's that's I think that's to be art- artistically pretentious here that's kind of an achievement in itself much like the room 
it's the, that a movie can have that sort of personal effect on you mm. even for being bad and, ha- and like strike that chord with someone. I'm sure I'm not the only person who finds the movie that hilariously bad. And if there are any more of you out there, come find me and talk to me about this movie because I need more people because none of my friends want to watch it with me anymore. <laughs> I've exhausted it all. This movie has affected all my personal relationships. It's, it's eroded them. I need new people to talk about Suicide Squad with. But uh, yeah, it's just it's, it's an incredibly fun ride from start to finish. Uh, 10 out of 10. <laughs> Perfect movie. No problem. Well, what, what would you... <clears throat> Since it's a 10 out of 10, I guess there might not be a lot of things. But what would you change if you could go through – what would be the biggest thing you would change? Oh, God. Like to make um, this a good I movie. I think just the the basic concept of what the Suicide Squad is. Yeah. It should not exist as like some sort of peacekeeping outfit. It should be like a black ops secret off the books team that goes in and does the missions that the government can't let people know they're doing. Yeah. Like that, like having them be the deterrent to Superman makes absolutely no sense because Superman could kill them all in five seconds. Yeah, that was that was a <laughs> yeah. terrible motivation. I don't, I, I don't know why they thought that was a good idea when they have. It's again, it's these things where they change things in the comics. Some of them I get, like Spider Man Homecoming. I think did a great job of changing things from the comics to make mm-hmm. a new universe for Spider Man, a new little microcosm inside the MCU. But with this, it's like they're changing things that don't need to be changed into things that are worse. Yeah. Well, they, like it, Batman murdering people, Batman killing people, or Superman being a miserable piece of garbage. It's like, well, these aren't, that's not what the characters are about. And you're changing them because you, you think you want to be edgy or you want to have this new interpretation, but you need to keep the heart and soul of the characters and the ideas intact. Yeah. The movie really should have opened up on the Joker doing something like pulling off a heist successfully getting away Hmm. and then being like we need to stop him like batman shouldn't have been able to stop him because he was too worried about saving people right so like say joker sets up a bomb joker gets away batman defuses the bomb amanda waller's like Hmm. we need people who are not going to care about victims yeah you know what i mean and then that's go in and and because you know, they could even say like Joker's basically got his own private army or whatever. Like he's recruited so many people. Yeah. He's he's making arms robberies and, and bombings and, and mass shootings and whatever. And he's orchestrating all this chaos. We need to take him out, yeah. but we can't go in and assassinate him. Like we can't really, it's not like it's Osama bin Laden. Like this is basically like a crime Lord and he's hard to track down and have Harley Quinn be like your person on the inside and have her be reformed quote unquote, and then have her go nuts again when she gets to the Joker and have her relapse, like that would be kind of tragic. Yeah. And you could build up that tragedy of Harley Quinn's character. There's potential there. And said they went, uh, okay, we're going to have them all fight a big monster. Yeah. And, uh, it's going to be the end of the world. Again, from conceptually the point down, they should not have had them been involved in an end of the world because these characters do not fit in that at all. Superman fits that Batman doesn't really fit that. Like maybe depending on the villain, like Rachel Ghoul, maybe, uh, Wonder Woman fits that. The Flash might fix that, fit that, but the Suicide Squad, these these ground level heroes, do not fit an end of the world plot. Yeah, and they don't need to. Is the other thing that the, no. these studios seem to forget. It doesn't always need to be so massive. Like exactly, if you know, it can be such. It can be small scale and still mean something. Similar to uh, Spider Man yeah. Homecoming. Right, like exactly, yeah. The whole, the biggest thing that was going to happen was some technology was going to get taken away, which had bigger, bigger implications. But the the conflict in Spider Man Homecoming was a plane getting stolen, and yet yeah. they made that important. They made you feel like, oh, that's you know, they, he he has to take care of this. He has to fix this. Like you just have to care. Mm-hmm. The filmmakers have to care about what's happening in the movie. And then the audience is going to care also, <laughs> you know, like it just yeah, feels you, like they you, have you a can formula. Make any, yeah. You can make any story work if it's written well. Yeah. That's just like a, a fact about like storytelling. You can make any story work if it's done well and you can make a really like low key and, and small scale story work. But this one, they, they, they should have used a small scale story and they made it this big apocalyptic event 
but they didn't make anything around that work. They could have made it interesting, but they the, because these characters don't really function against that, when you see Deadshot walking through the mist, firing an automatic pistol at an ancient witch, you're like, why? What am I? <laughs> what is this? What, this doesn't this doesn't add up. It doesn't click because no. she's she, it's not her weakness. Dynamite is her weakness. <laughs> Use some dynamite. <laughs> well, and the other thing too is Suicide Squad sing, seems to lend itself more to real, realism than mystical. Yeah, like it seems like it would work much better in a grounded reality than having all this yeah. magic and you know, like you take out uh, El Diablo, you take out Enchantress. I think you got a much stronger movie. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> but no, or this, have it just be smaller scale because if you have. Or maybe just have him be a pyrokinetic and he can summon and shoot fire. And that's all he can do at most. Yeah. He can't turn into a big demon to fight another big demon because why would you want that? Yeah. Because why does it doesn't fit with the theme of here's a woman with a bat and here's a guy who can shoot stuff real good. And here's a man who can climb things. And here's a man. He's a crocodile. It, you, you, there's a certain kind of villain they should be facing off against and it shouldn't be a big magical monster. Yeah. It's kind of the same issue justice league had to where the bad guy was so bad until Superman showed up. And it, yeah. the same thing kind of happened with Suicide Squad to where the bad guy was unstoppable until El Diablo turned into his his giant yeah. form. I don't I don't even know what to call exactly. it. I don't know. It's this movie's bad. I would not it's I don't bad. <laughs> I don't recommend watching it. I don't think any of the I DC do. movies are really worth watching. I say get a couple friends, get a few drinks around, um, put on this movie and laugh. Have a great night. Do it 12 more times after on your own. Live a sad <laughs> life like me. Just li- leave a sad, unfulfilled life like me and just watch Suicide Squad all day. <laughs> well, how can I feel like there's, there's a hidden message? There's a hidden message I got to crack, Alan. I'm going to get it. Yeah? <laughs> I'm going to get what this movie's all about sooner or later. It's about it's something in there. It's about money. It's about, it's about tricking family. people into pain. <laughs> no, that's, no, that's Fast and the family. Furious. That's Fast and the no, Furious. No, really? It's about the family you make. It's not the one you can't. Pick your friends' noses. I don't, I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> that's, the point is. That's all Fast and the Furious. You're, you're just very the critics. The critics don't get it. The critics don't get oh, it, man. Oh, man. No. Critics don't get it. We should we should stop movie criticism from existing. Yes. Critics should all be killed in the street. Critics don't get it. They're ruining our movies. Yep. How dare they give a bad movie a bad review? That What, what are they doing? Their jobs? <laughs> That's that was a big thing going on when this movie came out. They're saying people don't like yeah. it because the critics gave it a bad score before people saw it. <laughs> or was that uh, not, Justice League? I think it was. It was all three. It was all, <laughs> it of, was them. all of them. And it's like think, looking back on that now, how insane are those people making that theory? Because these movies are not good. Even Wonder Woman, I don't think deserves like the hyperbolically positive response it got, because it's it's not bad. Mm. It's just really really average. And obviously, you can't control how much people like a movie. Yeah. But when I see like ninety three on Rotten Tomatoes, and I hear they're gonna push it for Best Picture, I'm like, no, mm. no, 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 no. Like like it, this is not a Dark Knight. Wonder Woman is not a The Dark Knight. It's not like a. It doesn't. It doesn't change the genre. It doesn't like show some magnificent performances or even really that great direction or storytelling it's just a very average serviceable superhero movie and it's entertaining because of that yeah and all the other dc movies are so terrible i don't don't even think it was because the other movies were terrible that this movie got a good response i maybe this is a bit of a crappy thing to say i think it was because it was the first big uh female superhero movie like this yeah and people really want to like it like, well, I, I don't think it's entirely unfair to say based on like how big of a positive response it got for that movie. I don't think it's unfair to say that like people really wanted to like it and were willing to overlook some of the flaws to say like go see this movie and support it. And I think it should have been supported, certainly. Yeah. It was a, it was a, it was a fun time. I enjoyed myself. But I wasn't like, oh, yeah, this is a movie that's definitely going to turn things around and change things. I'm like, okay, Patty Jenkins knows how to tell a story. That's about all I know. Yeah. Well, like I haven't seen Wonder Woman, so it's all uh, my guesses yeah. and stuff. But I think not only do people want to like it, people are afraid to not like it. I think it's a Absolutely. similar similar thing. Well, I think it's, with, it's the Ghostbusters effect, where if you don't like it, you're a sexist. Yeah, or I was going to say which is an unfair. 13 Reasons Why. I don't know if you watched well, that. That was just crap. It was, that was awful, just garbage. But because it was terrible. It, 
because it covered suicide, people are like afraid well, if you don't to, like it. yeah. If, you're, if you're, you don't like it, you must think it's okay. You must not be, you must not be like ready to confront it or something. It's something stupid like that. Yeah. It, it's not, a stupid argument always has stupid excuses like that. It, yes. it, it's, it's the same thing with like, some, I know you didn't enjoy the last Jedi, but yeah. there are a lot of criticisms of the last Jedi that are really dumb. Oh, hundred percent. And not, I mean, not unfair, not true, just, just wrong. Yeah. And a lot of it is again, sexism, which comes towards the other. Like, did you see that thing where they, um, a bunch of, uh, men rights activists, quote unquote, made a, a 46 minute cut of the last Jedi <laughs> that cut all the female characters out, <laughs> <laughs> which is so I mean, like, someone had to sit down and do that. I wanted to sit down and do that. It's the same thing with like the people who complained about the all female screenings of Wonder Woman. Mm. It's the same level of stupidity on both sides. Yeah. Or I mean, on the same side of, of like hating women, which is unfortunate. And I think, you know, celebrating Wonder Woman as a movie is, is good because you know what? Uh, I think in, in, in nerd fandom, a lot of times women are pushed aside and that's really unfair and crappy. And to have a solid product involving them and like, you know, directed by a woman and starring a woman who does a really great job and having this kind of very empowering story, that's really good. Yeah. But um, I think I think you have to still be able to be fair to it and and treat it with, you know, a, a still a solid critical eye. And if people just really enjoyed the movie, they really enjoyed the movie. But you can't let uh, sexism in either way, like influence your thoughts. Yeah, or, I think or that let, or let the the. I guess trying to predict outrage, trying to be a precursor to outrage and be like, well, uh, I know people are going to hate this movie because blank, but I really love it. And trying to be like, feel like you're spe I think it's a lot of it too. It's people trying to feel like guys, I know a lot of people are going to hate it because it's a woman, but I like it. And I'm a good person because of that. Yeah. Just, just say your opinion. It's a movie. Just say your opinion. And, and people will, I think people are, they want to make a point and have something to say, quote unquote, more, more than have an opinion about it. They want to like have a hot take or and then or like and make a big uh, mind blowing social point about it when really it's just a big superhero movie and I treat Wonder Woman no differently than I would treat Doctor Strange 3. Yeah. Well, I think people miss the fact that if you are supporting something only because it's a woman lead, you are equally damaging your your point, right? Like you're going it's patronizing, yeah. Yeah, like you're like, oh, this is the best movie ever because there's a woman lead and it's a terrible movie. Then you're yeah. only hurting your stance of whatever, yeah. right? Like I, I want to see good I want to <laughs> see good movies starring anyone. And there have been great movies starring of a wide variety of people. Yeah. I don't think any any movie deserves special treatment for um, doing something that I mean, in some I, in some respects, it is a brave thing to cast like a in a big mainstream movie a black lead because mm -hmm. you know you don't see that a lot. Like, a Get Out is was in some ways kind of a risky move, and I really respect that movie, even though I don't love it to bits. I really respect it for what it did, and Wonder Woman the same way. I'm I'm really glad they put that much money into such a female driven story, and that it paid off so well. Yeah, but I, I think overreacting to it as like this amazing piece of art is a bit much because it's just, it's a solid movie. And that's just my opinion. Obviously, yeah. if you think it's an amazing piece of art, go for it. Like, tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm dumb. You're welcome to, cause I, I welcome the debate, but I, I think like, just treat them like movies. And there was no debate like this over suicide squad because I mean, actually it was kind of disturbing because like, like little girls dressing up like Harley Quinn for Halloween. Yeah. I found that to be a bit bizarre. I was like, Harley Quinn's like a, a murderer and like a crazy <laughs> one. And she's like, has a weird, she's in a weird, terrible, abusive relationship. Is this really what you want your kids to be supporting? <laughs> Maybe that should be a controversy more than, uh, more than wonder woman. <laughs> I'd, I'd argue. Maybe that's a bit more questionable. <laughs> I think Disney, the way Disney is going about it with the Star Wars by having Rey, having Jin, uh, is yeah. it feels much more calculated, which I have much more of a problem with. Like it, yeah. I mean, I see the calculation, but mm -hmm. I, but with Rey, I enjoy her character and I enjoy her story. With Jin or so, I didn't like her. So I, I just, I have that response. I mean, I, I, I don't think it's, it's more calculated because I don't like Jin or so mm -hmm. I see the calculation and I, and I think wonder woman was actually a very smart move comic book movie wise, because there hadn't really been like Catwoman was the last big movie like that. And that was a disaster. Yes. Catwoman is a disaster <laughs> So to have even a solid movie 
led by a, a female character like that, I think was a really good move, especially since the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the DC movie had been such a sausage fest up at that point. Yeah. Like you had Black Widow, who was such a minor player. And they're like, oh yeah, Captain Marvel's coming. We swear she's coming somewhere. And even to introduce like a main uh, black hero through Black Panther took so long. I mean, yeah. you had, again, you had like, you had Rhodey and you had Falcon. They were just sidekicks though. Well, you know, they what makes me upset just, about that is everyone forgets about Blink Man. The greatest black superhero ever. Who? <laughs> See? Blink Man. Is that my bad? Is that my bad? I don't know who that is. <laughs> yeah. Blink Man. The, uh, it's a 90s comedy superhero movie with um, huh. David Alec Greer and... Uh, Marlon Wayans? Yeah, but Damon, I think it was. Damon, Damon Wayans? Yeah. Damon Wayans Jr.? One of them, yeah. One of the Wayans. Uh, it's, a, it's a joke uh mostly okay. it it's a great it's it's really funny for the time yeah but uh he was a black I think, superhero yeah, it, yeah diversity in these superhero movies need to be embraced and and suicide squad is in its own way diverse you know you have will smith in the lead but will smith leading a movie is nothing really new yeah i mean you have uh, killer croc being turned into essentially a black character but kind of a weird uncomfortable stereotype at the same time where he he talks in a very a, a, a very overtly kind of gangsterish way, yeah. And then at the end, they're like, "What do you want?" He says, B "His one wish in prison is BET." I'm like, <laughs> "Okay, I, I, I guess I guess it's a weird way to view the world, David Ayer, but cool." Um, but you know, uh, I guess you know you have a um, Hispanic character and a Japanese character. Like, I, I get that. It doesn't feel and it doesn't feel calculated in Suicide Squad because nothing in Suicide Squad feels calculated. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think like superhero movies need to grow and change and evolve in the same way that Star Wars does, in the same yeah. way that all blockbusters need to. Yeah. Because I mean, this is more of my film school uh, liberal side, where I'm like, you see, you see a lot of white people stories, and eventually it gets tiresome, even when they're done really well. Yeah. Like I've heard a lot of good things about uh, that Lady Bird movie that I haven't seen yet. I have not but seen. But I mean, that's like a, a a white girl coming of age. But apparently, it's just the handling of it, and they handle it well. And you you need to get more diverse voices in there too, though, yeah. because the the movie industry is very white and very male as well. But when you get someone like Greta Gerwig or um, who did Lady Bird or someone like jordan peele who did get out you get those diversity the diversity in voices leads to diversity in experiences which leads to diversity in stories and i think yeah tapping patty jenkins was a great move because you get you that way you get a female character who isn't defined by how a male character thinks empowerment should be defined or how a male director would think it you get a female perspective on it that's why that, that character is handled so well in that movie mm -hmm. but with this movie you get harley quinn who's is out the whole time so yeah. it's it's the it's the disassociation there yeah the they need to get there needs to be i mean obviously <laughs> given what's happened recently there need to be some changes in how hollywood works but um yeah I, I especially with these big blockbusters because people dismiss them pretty readily and say like oh it's just another comic book movie but these movies are pretty kind of important to movies because they've they've changed how movies work how franchises work how studios work alongside each other with the whole spider-man having shared rights and you know the acquisition of 20th century fox by disney leads to the x-men coming into the mcu like the like these movies are influencing big changes in the industry and because of that, I think they need to take chances. I mean, this is we've we've gone on a whole diversity tangent now, <laughs> but uh, um, but they they need to take chances and be bold and be to to a certain extent risky. I, I hesitate to use the word risk because all these movies cost like two hundred million dollars. There's not too much risk going into them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then you because it can go horribly wrong. Suicide Squad went horribly wrong, but it still made a bunch of money. And I would like to see better products be rewarded than a bad movie. I mean, obviously bad movies making money is nothing new. Like the Transformers series is a testament to that, <clears> but that one finally plateaued. Like this last movie, I think made half of what the four did. Oh, wow. Like nobody really wants Transformers movie. Like they're making a Bumblebee spinoff coming out next summer. Nobody wants that. Yeah. Like nobody wants these movies, but they're still making them. And I think that's the same. Like DC is kind of slowing their role, but the problem is they had a really knockout hit with Wonder Woman. And I think people like Suicide Squad enough that like we could do something else with this, but everything about this universe just doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, no, they. I would just like to see DC make one movie that 
<laughs> doesn't <was> change. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't that doesn't change from beginning to end. Like that doesn't have to go through and reshoot half the movie and we like start with a vision. And I I think we talked about it a little bit the last time you're on, but the 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 animated series, all that stuff is really, you know, highly regarded. And I think yeah. because animation, you can't you can't just change everything up, you know, day by day. Absolutely, yeah. You have to have a clear defined vision from beginning to end. And you mm-hmm. go through and you make it like that. I think if they did the movie, even if it wasn't good, even if it was, you know, Zack Snyder's vision from beginning to end, and it wasn't the best thing that it could have been, it would be so much better than what Justice League. Like if you would have gotten Zack Snyder's Justice League exactly how yeah. he intended, it would have been better than what we got. That's what I said in my uh, video about it. I said it would have been, it probably would have been more ridiculous, but at least it would have been more consistent. It would yeah. have felt like, I think, I don't know if it would have felt like a complete movie, like after Batman v Superman. Like Man of Steel feels like a complete movie. Yeah. I know he can make a movie that feels like a cohesive whole, but after Batman v Superman, I don't know that he can handle these big, huge, enormous stories. And I think Justice League would have just ballooned outward into something uncontrollable because he was given so much free reign essentially. And then they came in and said, okay, after these last few, Zach, we can't give you that much control anymore. And he said, well, we've already made this movie. And they said, well, I mean, no, they didn't say go away. He went away of his own accord because of a personal tragedy, which was terrible. Yeah. But, and yeah, that was, that was a really sucky thing to happen. And I, 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 I I feel awful for the guy because of that. I, but I do wish I, I, and I don't want to see the Zack Snyder justice league because like, I'm I'm a huge fanboy, and I think it or because there are people who petition who have petitioned to make that like that it doesn't exist. The Snyder Cut, quote unquote, doesn't exist. Yeah, but I would like to see it because I think as much as I don't like Zack Snyder and I ridicule him and I think he's very not good at what he does, <laughs> I I think he has a lot of passion. He has a lot of drive, and he clearly loves working within this universe. He just doesn't know what he's doing. That's the big problem. Yeah. But he, he he clearly wants to be working with these characters and this universe, and I wish he had a better thing to be working with. I mean, he ruined it in the first place, but I, I do wish that he could <laughs> he could pour that kind of energy into something good. Yeah. Well, also, the other issue that they had was they went so completely different with, uh, with Josh Whedon, who... Yeah. Like, what a stark contrast to try to meld into one thing. Yeah, I never thought that was going to be very cohesive. No. Because it just, they, those two style, and they, they said from the beginning, like in a press release, they're like, yeah, we're going to stick with Zack Snyder style. Like, they're not. It's going to be a mess. Oh my God, this is going to be terrible. Yeah. And it was worse than I imagined. <laughs> it was so, it's so disjointed. And the, the, the green screen, the green screen, green work and the editing really point, especially the dialogue too really points to like how like that scene after superman fights them all and then just cuts to batman like lying on this little isolated patch of ground like rolling around going ow my back it's like this <laughs> that was not in the movie before and, and you could have cut that easily the i couldn't believe how bad the green screen looked with aquaman like there's oh yeah there's that was, youtube that was channels that do better green screen than that like it didn't make any sense why it looks so awful i mean did you see the mustache CGI man? That was pretty try. bad. <laughs> that was pretty bad. But that at least is something more complicated. You know what I mean? They're painting it frame yeah. by frame and all that stuff. And so, and even just getting a beard on them. <laughs> yeah. Just getting faces right uh, yeah. through animation is difficult, but doing green screen has been done for how many years now? Like it was yeah. so clear that it was a green screen that it is shocking to me. How I have a whole new effort. respect for yeah, I have a whole new respect for Paramount after they made Henry Cavill keep his mustache for the <laughs> Mission Impossible. After they like they just stuck to their guy like no under no circumstances can he shave. It's just such a ridiculous quabble that I'm like this is great. This is amazing. This is what I want studios to fight over. <laughs> well, because millions of dollars on the line also for, for Henry Cavill's mustache. Was there another scene other than that beginning vlog? Our interview YouTube video. Yeah, that that was the only one that really stood out with his mustache, right? Uh, for me, it almost always stood out, especially at the end when he was uh, pushing apart the boxes with um, Cyborg, and it was right in tight on his face, and he was like yelling. 
it, I, it, it, it distracted me the whole time. I was watching for it the whole time because they opened with it. Yeah. That was their biggest mistake. Yeah. I mean, well, that scene crap, was, why? <laughs> that scene didn't make any sense at all. Uh, no, because everyone was afraid of Superman up until he died. Yeah. So why would little because, kids? <laughs> it was because when they when he came back to life and he was acting like Superman should, they were like, "Remember, this is what he was like before." And everyone who was actually seeing the movies was like, uh, "No, he's not. <laughs> That's not what he was like at all." Remember when he murdered that guy in cold blood and then screamed like a maniac <laughs> and then burnt down Metropolis? <laughs> oh, that movie! It's it's so um, bad. It's terrible, but I'm looking forward to Aquaman, honestly, because these DC movies have all been such a mess. I'm really looking forward to Aquaman. I will. I probably won't see it in the theater because Justice League just made me angry. Like Suicide Squad, I at least had fun with in the theater and same with Batman v Superman. Like me and my friends were just laughing the whole time because we're having a great time because it was so incompetent. But with with uh, Justice League, I was just angry and Wonder Woman. I liked just fine. And um with Aquaman, I, I really don't know. Like, if it's really bad, I'm probably just not going to watch it in theaters because why would I pay money to go have a miserable experience <laughs> like that? Yeah, there's no way it's going to be good. I get, mm, like, yeah. I can't even imagine a, a way that they would make Aquaman entertaining. Like, Suicide Squad, I think, is my template for a fun, bad movie. Yeah. And I don't see any DC movie or any, honestly, any movie can top it. <laughs> <laughs> could be like more funny and more entertaining and more uh more consuming than suicide squad has been in my life yeah aquaman is gonna be not not a good time not it's gonna be way worse than suicide squad was and yeah yeah i don't know i mean james wan is an okay director but i think jason momoa is not good in this role at all they're gonna do the same thing with wonder woman though is just make him a different character because yeah, in justice league he's all just my man and yeah yeah <laughs> and that's just not really that's as a replacement for a personality he just yells things yeah which is um, a lot like me um <laughs> and <laughs> i really related to him on that note and um but yeah, with this, with Aquaman, they're gonna have to make him like a real character, and it's gonna be jarring. Same with um, whatever they do with the solo Batman movie. I don't know if they're gonna keep Affleck on at this point. I think he just wants, everything. and if they get someone else, like oh, he's just a completely different character. Then they'll just erase it. They'll just, I think they'll just ignore a lot of stuff and just try to make the new movies better. And then they'll keep hiring people who don't really know what they're doing and make bad movies. <laughs> well, a Suicide Squad. I don't even know how to end this. Suicide Squad is what it is. The best if, movie yet created. If you've seen it, you already know. If you haven't seen it, you're probably better off. You're uh, missing out. <laughs> <laughs> how, no, don't listen to them. Don't listen to them. Don't listen to the haters, man. <laughs> Suicide Squad is the best movie of the last decade, and I will hear no argument. <laughs> <laughs> well, how can people find your uh, YouTube channel? Uh, it's just my name, Ross McIntyre, small C, big I. Uh, I talk about movies and stuff. You can find links to my t- Twitter and all that stuff on there. I, I tweet about whatever uh, TV or movies I happen to be watching and then just retweet a lot of stupid things also. So I make videos very infrequently, but when I do, I've I've heard good things from other people. I don't believe them, but you know, <laughs> I'm working on it. And then uh, you can find us on Twitter at I seen that pod.